Merry Christmas to you all. We miss worshiping you with worshiping in person with you all. And I bring you Christmas greetings from Therese and Bob and Karen and Brianne, Linda, and me, Pastor Glenn, and the session and deacons of First Presbyterian Church of Waukesha. We hope that this service brings you joy. Remember, God knows not time nor distance. So we welcome all who are joining us online, whether you are a member or not. And when it is safe, we'll all be back in purpose, in person. Please have a candle ready to light when at the end of the service we sing Silent Night together. You might pause the service right now and go get your candle. And we'll need to use our imaginations to remember Christmases long, long ago when the light of the candles filled the sanctuary. We're grateful for so many of folks who have continued to send in their pledges and their support during these trying times. If you want, you can send in your off offering into the church office. It will be used to further the ministry of this congregation, including our work with the Caring Place and Hebron House, the Hope Center, and other global and local missions. Please feel free to give as you feel led. In this season of longing, of waiting, of watching, we seek your light. This night, of all nights, we celebrate how your light has come. You walked with our ancestors when the light of hope was dim. You, when the light of love flickered, when joy was fragile, when the way of peace was blocked. You come now in our need to show us that your light has indeed come and will be with us always. Paul writes, for Christ is our peace. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one and broken down the dividing wall. That is, the hostility between us. We light the Christ candle, astonished at how you work. Let us pray. O oh God, we seek your light. We continue to be astounded by how you act in our world and what you accomplish. Fill our hearts so full of your hope, love, joy, and peace that we are compelled to tear down walls and become bridges to peace for our world. In the name of God who comes, Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Will you join me in this night's Christmas prayer? Together, we have waited for a long time for your hope, love, joy, and peace to shine in the darkness of this world. Even now, we await you. You did not come into this world in a show of power and glory. You did not shine forth for all creation to behold, a tiny spark, a newborn baby, visible to parents and curious animals, a host of angels away from the populated areas, singing to migrant workers, a sparkling star guiding foreigners to see what neighbors could not. Open our hearts, merciful God, to the sparks of your presence still in this world. Open our eyes that we might behold your presence in the least likely of places and among the least likely of people. Amen. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for fire. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.
In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord showed around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Let us show each other a sign of that peace. And let's wave to each other. Let's use our imaginations to remember all the people that are part of this church, this church family, and wish them peace during this time. You may wave or you may look up in the balcony and see Karen up there, however you'd like to do that.
If anyone knows of God's inconvenient timing, Mary and Joseph know. They were engaged, were they not? Looking forward to their wedding day. Couldn't Gabriel have waited a few more months before visiting Mary? Or why not visit Mary and Joseph at the same time so that together they could hear the angel's message? Why make matters more complicated, more difficult than they already were? And then there is Rome's inconvenient timing. I mean, why make a pregnant woman who are in their eighth or ninth month travel? Well, that's an easy answer. Rome doesn't care. Rome has the power to tell people where to go and what to do and how much to pay in taxes, especially the poor and powerless. That is why Rome's dictates lead to resentment and rebellion. Rome is looking out solely for Roman interests, the interests of the wealthy and the powerful. God's inconvenient timing made it clear that God was behind Mary's pregnancy, not Joseph. That God so loved the world. Mary is called not only to receive God's grace, but trust that God would work out all the complications. God requests the help of a poor teenage girl to bear God's light into this weary, worn, greedy, superficial, suffering, violent, dark world of ours. Yes, God's time is, is inconvenient at times, but what is born? Creative possibilities whose results can clearly be seen. Greater love, freedom, and hope. And as the Apostle Paul says so clearly, hope does not disappoint us. Have you ever thought about what the message of Christmas might look like or sound like or feel like to a people who may not share our same circumstances? What does the Christmas message look to families who have lost their homes due to the ravages of violence, like those in the Cameroon or folks on the West Bank, who, like Mary and Joseph, have become refugees, fleeing threats and terror, searching for a safe haven? Perhaps they are grateful to just be alive, but also distressed by not being able to provide for their families. What might the message of Christmas sound like to the rich and powerful Herods of our world? For Herod is indeed part of this Christmas story. The Herods who are so afraid of losing their power and privilege that they preserve it by any means necessary, especially through intimidation, vilification, chaotic activity, and denial. How might the message of Christmas be liberating to the Herods of our world? As much as the culture tells us that Christmas is about us and our giving, that is not completely true. That is the Christmas of the Hallmark Channel. Christmas is a time when society gives all permission to practice our generosity muscle. That's true. But Christmas is so much more. Christmas is a time to pause and ponder that God so loves us and our world. And when we pause and wonder, Christmas gives us the time to receive this love more fully in our lives and in our hearts. When we take the time, we realize that God's gift to us, to the world, is that God came down to be with us. The holy child whom Mary bears is God's expression of hope and peace, joy, and love. The Christ child announced by unearthly angels, visited by simple shepherds, adored by the majestic majestic outsiders. The educated, the wealthy, the enlightened, the powerful were not there. No, the unearthly, the marginalized, and the outsider, plus representatives of the natural world, surrounded and celebrated this Christ coming into the world. When we take the time we realize that this gift of God is not just for us, but it is for all the world. God so loved the world. God opened God's heart up for all the world to see God's hope and love for us.
God's peace between us, God's joy in us. Yes, God gave the world a great gift in the birth of Jesus, but God gives the world a second great gift, us. Yes, that is the gift that God continues to give the world this Christmas. God gives the world a people who know what it means to live in this world of strife and pain, this darkened and violent world of ours. God gives, us this, wor- gives this world a people who are self-reflective about our privilege, who acknowledge our need to make reparations, who understand how the structures of our society constrict opportunities from those without a whole lot of means. God is born anew in each of us so that we become the bearers of God's hope, peace, joy, love, and light. God deeply loves us so that we can deeply love. That love is so undeniable that God's love spills over into our family, into the surrounding areas of this church, into our country, into our world, for love casts out fear. Compassion knows no hatred or boundaries. Like Mary and Joseph, sometimes God's timing is inconvenient. We want our houses to be clean, our taxes to be paid, and troubles to leave us alone. We want to avert our eyes from the poverty that we see, stop our ears from the desperation that there is in this world of ours. And yet God opens our eyes and unstops our ears. The Holy Spirit moves us to express compassion and solidarity at inconvenient times. When we are on God's time, When we are God's people, we are not in control. Like Mary, all we can do is receive and do what we can with what we have at the time. God will take care of the rest. Christmas is not about us, but about what God does for us, in us, through us. Bearing hope, peace, joy, love, and light into our world now. In the fall of 1985, when I was first at Port St. Vincent de Paul, a homeless shelter of sorts, a woman called me up and asked me out to lunch. She took me out to a local ice cream parlor and asked what I wanted to order. I looked over the menu and told her, um... My, sa- uh, my sandwich choice. And she looked at me and said, No, Glenn, what dessert do you want? Life is too short. I always eat dessert first. <laughs> I smiled and I ordered a hot fudge sundae. As we talked, she said she would make, like to make sure that each man at the port got a wrapped gift to open on Christmas Day. She was a big believer in opening a wrapped gift. Flannel shirts, it turns out. She was very practical. I was to provide the sizes. Well, this went on for several years, and I generally ordered just a few more shirts than the current numbers because that gave me a tad more flexibility, and sometimes I could be generous with somebody in need. I hardly ever evicted anyone out of Port St. Vincent de Paul during the holiday season, but one year a young man just newly out of prison became particularly unpleasant. So about four days before Christmas, I asked him to leave. He was angry, lashing out at any authority figure that he could set his sights on, especially me. As he left, I told him that after Christmas, if he came around, I just might have a present for him. When he finally showed up three weeks later, I had one shirt left. It happened to be his size. Just by showing up to face me, he was apologizing without having to say anything. 
So I went back into the storage room and gave him the wrapped gift. He tore it open. His eyes teared up. And tears spilled over. This was a young man who had spent lots of time in the weight room. He had big muscles. After a moment, I asked him what was going on. This is the first Christmas gift I have received in over 15 years. How did you know? He asked. How did I know what? I replied. These are my favorite colors, the colors I like to wear. The flannel shirt was checkered black and white. Oh, I said, Merry Christmas. And he left, and I never saw him again. It's a small story. But so was Mary's considered yes. It was not a gift that I had purchased. I was just the conduit, kind of like Mary. God gives us so much, like that poor woman determined to bring joy to the world on Christmas Day. God uses us poor vessels to spread God's love into this world. Let us pray. God, it's just a miracle that we can be together and we can open up your word on this night of all nights and hear the angel voices. We may not be able to fall on our knees because they may be a little creaky, But in our heart, we fall down because you, you decided to become enfleshed. You decided to be a baby coming out of Mary into this darkened, troubled world of ours. But you chose to do so. You chose to come, to be with us. So thank you, Lord, for this time, for this church, for your love for us. And we ask you to continue to open our eyes and our ears to those around us who are in need so that we too may be a conduit of your love. We pray this in the name of Jesus, the babe in the manger, and let the people say, Amen. Will you join me in saying the Lord's Prayer together? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now it's time to get your candle and sing. Let us sing together, Silent Night. Holy night.
Remember, this is Christmas. And Christmas is not just a day, it's an attitude. It's not just an emotion, it's a way of life. And it's a way of life to be open to the one who calls us children. A privilege to be called God's children. So may the blessings of Almighty God, the Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit remain with you now and always. Amen. Merry Christmas.